Hello, everybody. Today is the first of its kind with Bokang Mudisam, your guest host today for the very nice discussion we're going to have with one of the expertise. In fact, if I may say it like that, particularly when we talk to internal audit professions that we are all sort of called for. We know it is a fact that most of us as internal audit, we were somehow dragged into this profession. Many of us wanted to be lawyers. I'm sure there are some internal auditors that wanted to be astronauts. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. internal audit called us to you. So now we are going to have some nice conversation with you today, particularly talking about the board and what is it that entails the board. And we are looking at our role. You know, one of our heroes when it gets internal auditors, we talk about governance. Governance is that line or that compass that we have to follow. So we are going to talk about the board, its role and how it works. And it is a quite opportune time because soon, in fact, less than 90 days, we will be having our South African annual general meeting for the Institute of Internal Auditors. Then we are going to be able to select, maybe replace, or some members of the board. So I think this is the quite opportune time. And I must say, you see now, the normal auditors were in blue, and I've just been informed by other more learned auditors than myself to say it is once in a blue moon. Uh, welcome, Randy. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about internal audit, but before we do any of those, let me not. I know animals are not speaking, but let's hear it from the horse's mouth. Who are you? Who's Randy? Where are you coming from? <laughs> and how did you end up Thank with you. us? Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Bogan. <clears throat> Thanks for having me. My name is Randy Lemkanyelo. Uh, I'm currently the Ethics and Compliance Manager at the South African Breweries. Um, I was born in East London. When can we be friends? South went. African Breweries, can we be friends? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, certainly, certainly. <laughs> so, so I was born in East London, which is where I grew up. <clears throat> spent most of my childhood there and then I moved um, about 20, 12 years ago um, to Johannesburg where I started working. Well, I had started working uh, for Deloitte when I was still in East London um, okay. and then I moved uh, to, to the Deloitte Johannesburg office. That's where I, I really uh, fell in love with the audit, uh, you know, uh, field. Um, oh, I so yeah, you. I've been... Yes. That's I'm, I'm sorry, okay. man. I'm going to cut you there. You speak on the one no important problem. thing. You know, it's quite strange that I'm talking you. I'm talking to you now from East London, and very strange enough during my journeys of internal audit, I also worked around this area. So it definitely shows the world of internal audit is very small. Yeah. I will continue. Sorry about that. <laughs> Look, I, I went to a in the bus. There are many times so I'm going to stop you, please. Bear with me, right? No problem. No yeah. problem at all. So uh, please do stop me uh, whenever you feel comfortable, and then uh, we can we can have the, a good conversation from, from whatever that you can pick up from the conversation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right. So, yeah. So, so, um, so I, I want to assume, sorry, I want to assume now, now you, you were born here, Monty, and then you mm -hmm. lived your life and studied there, and then you became an internal audit. But I want to take you a little bit back. Okay. When you were in, I don't know, for you, I should say standard nine or grade 11, but one of those two, when you were there, did you ever think you were going to be an internal auditor? So I was in standard nine, right? Um, so mm -hmm. my, my, my initial career progression or career aspiration, I wanted to be a, an accountant. Um, at the time, I hadn't even... Uh, gotten introduced to the word chartered accountant. So I didn't know what a chartered accountant was. I just wanted to be an accountant because I enjoyed accounting at school. And I thought oh, definitely this is what I'll be doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. So it, no, no, no. Only... I was just thinking earlier to say most of us, I will say yes. definitely maybe if I had money to put on it, I will say 80% of us wanted to be something rather than uh, internal audit. But the fact remains that this is a calling, my man. It will call you from accounting, yeah. from actual scientists, to even bring you there. So we're happy to have you in your profession. So now you, you moved towards, uh, with one of the corporate firms, moving to Gaudet. Yes, 
indeed. Um, so I, I only had started hearing of internal audit when I was in grade 12. Uh, when some people from, uh, I think, Walter Sassoulu University at the time came through to our mm -hmm. school just to present uh, some of the career choices that people could make. That was the first time I heard of internal audit, right? So, right. Um, so, so yeah, I, I knew um, that I must be in an audit firm somewhere. I was not sure yet what I wanted to do, what internal audit mm -hmm. was, was doing, uh, but I knew I wanted to be in an audit firm. So okay. I... After matric, I actually be, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I thought you wanted to come. Yeah. So after matric, mm -hmm. I I, no, no, I, I just I just wanted company. to get you out to say you wanted to yeah. be in a corporate for corporate firm because you realize it the ladies internal audit are too beautiful for my liking. <laughs> 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 but yeah, then um, then yeah, you. No, I promise you. From I, I promise you, it had nothing to do with the ladies. Uh, <laughs> I remember in matric, in matric, I was the youngest uh, in, in the class, and whenever I got like a really good mark, I remember in one econom uh, economics uh, test, I got like ninety eight percent, and Ooh. some of the big boys that I went to school with. Um, they said, yeah, no, it's because he doesn't have a girlfriend. So at that time, I, I was not, it was definitely not about Talk about the jealousy, my man. Talk about jealousy. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it was definitely not about <laughs> Yes, so, um, I, I, so I, I didn't go to university immediately after that. So I went, um, I, I started looking for a job. So because of, of my situation at home, it was not um, a very conducive one for me to go to university. Um, so my, my parents were not working at the time. Um, so yeah, I, I, I by chance, and as, as you said, I mean, internal audit is a calling. So I got into a project that Deloitte was running at the time. So it was a consulting project uh, where we're going to schools, um, um, looking, getting information that the Department of Education wanted at the time. Uh, so they outsourced that to Deloitte. So that's how I got <clears throat> into Deloitte. Um, and then I saw when I, when I, I started working that project, I saw what the people are doing uh, in, the, in that audit firm. So it was a small office where you, you were able to see what internal auditors do, what forensic people mm -hmm. do, what consulting do. Mm -hmm. And you know, in small offices, you get to experience a bit of everything. <clears throat> so to cut a story long shot, um, that's where I saw internal auditing. I started liking it a bit more. Um, and I remembered it has been something that I had heard about before. So that's how I got into it. Um, and then I, I came through to Johannesburg <clears throat> in an audit uh, role. And yeah, as they say, the rest is history. <clears throat> the rest is history and photography. But thank you, sir, for making time to having a moment to discuss with us. And it's quite grateful. I think the audience also will testify to say all of us have some nice stories. If you get to go around just talking about the stories of how did I end up to be an internal auditor, it will be a quite general yeah. to write indeed. But welcome, sir. I am happy. Indeed. You didn't end up with the accountants. You had to come to the right profession uh, of internal <laughs> audit. So, sir, you know, I, I want to talk to you, in fact, particularly on this topic we are, we are on, on the role, the importance of the board. I think you will remember quite well, even in the nature of our work, governance is one of those legs that we look at. And the gist of governance, in fact, is on the board. It, so it provides that long-term direction. It provides that sort of a, a measuring tape of what is success, what is not success, provide principles and all of those sort of things, right? So why do you think that internal audit, especially in today and age, particularly in South African environment where inequality is at its best, everything it seems to go in South, instead of some development that we need, joblessness. You know, even us as internal auditors, there are hundreds of thousands, if not tens of thousands, of unemployed internal auditors that are worth certificates. How do you think the board today ought to appear like? What is the role of today's sort of board? So, um, 
Look, I think first and foremost, uh, any board member, they need to understand why they're in the board. They need to understand that who are they representing in the board. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is something called the agency theory, uh, which, mm -hmm. which, the, which gets created when, when someone, um, you know, authorizes someone else to look after their interests, right? Uh -huh. So in a, in, a, in a normal company or a traditional um, profit company, you would find shareholders being the owners and then they, they delegate or authorize the board to actually act on their behalf. So mm -hmm. first and foremost, you need to know as a board member that you, are, you have a fiduciary duty to look after someone else's interests. So it's mm -hmm. not about you in the main, but it's about the person whose interest you are looking for or um, exactly. looking out for. So, you know, so that's I, first you know, and foremost. The most, the most, I think, uh, yeah, I like your perspective of it. You must just know what are you doing in the board? What is so important that is happening in Indeed. the board? So let, let's take it a little bit deeper into mm. what, what you have, the judicial duty that you have uh, refer to if, if i'm an individual say I, I want to see myself being a member of the board of a particular any institute taking that official duty what type of characters one would expect that the stakeholder the shareholder will be interested to see you can you can take it anywhere academic experience even personality anything that you can chat i just want to hear your view about that so so my main thing um uh, this now cuts across all leadership whether you are in the board or you're in the executive or, or management as, as we call it we need ethical leaders and that's something that the country is in dire need of we need ethical leaders um to see our soes in their current state now it's because of lack of ethical leaders so mm -hmm. ethics is definitely my number one um a, a aspiration or number one um you know behavioral um competence that one needs to have uh, to be an effective board member first mm -hmm. and foremost need someone who's who's ethical who's who will do the right thing even when no one is is, is watching exactly. someone who knows mm -hmm. that they they always have to do something that is in the best interest of everyone else not just mm -hmm. about themselves so I think that's the main main ingredient that you cannot have a board without. Definitely, mm -hmm. that's the foundation of all things. No? Yeah, I think you no, also indeed. referred. To that. Mm. You also referred nicely to say if you are the board, you must always remember the purpose. What are you doing there? Irrespective of what your interests are, it's not about you. It's about the members. How do you think? What do you think is the importance of? the board listening to the stakeholders or the members, whatever type of board it is, whether it's a club, whether it's a corporate firm, whether it's the state-owned entity, any type of uh, board that you have. How important is it, in your view, that yeah. ability to listen to what the members or the stakeholders or the shareholders want to see happening, irrespective of their own personal perspective on that actual request? So the, the, the reason why I started with the agency theory was, was to outline the fact that when you act as a board member, you act on, on, other, pers on other people's interests. So mm -hmm. even if it's like a, a club or a professional body, you are acting for the members of that club or of that body, mm -hmm. right? So it's crucial that they, you do listen to, their, to the members and hear them out, see what they say. Mm -hmm where do they want the direction of the of the club itself or the of the body to to move um uh, in relation of course to your, your strategic direction um you know you can't just uh, you know interact with the person that you've authorized to 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 steer the ship without actually listening to the broader membership and that's why in the corporate um you'll you'll have board members meeting with shareholders at least twice a year because they need to see what the shareholders want and, and are they happy with where the company is going? Um, are they happy with the direction that um, you are steering the, the ship to? Um, so yes. same applies within a professional body. You need to hear uh, members, what, what do they want out of the club? 
how is it developing their careers how is it impacting you know the auditor of tomorrow and 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 everything that people want to get out of a professional body so you have to listen definitely to the membership yeah you know what i think i want us to go in specifics now i think in the it's most opportune time now mm -hmm. that we are going towards the agm of our own beloved south african chapter normally there we we do point or lose vacancies of board members well on the historical you know not long time ago i think you remember internal audit and accounting was one in south africa was one of the best in the world until things have happened that we drop over 40 places downward and you know once you're on top my man it's very difficult to allow yourself just to fall down and stay there take it without reason i think as a member uh, personally being a member of the institute for over 20 years i think uh, we we will want to see ourselves going back to to that position that is on top and the truth is i want to hear your view on that in my view the truth is that we need to have the board members that can be able to understand the importance of getting to that point as a profession of internal auditors. I think you have said it very nice. This sometimes to us internal audit is a calling. We, we want to take it quite serious. And as a profession, we have to grow together to actually take that recognition that we actually deserve. So it, it's, it's one of the most important things in my personal view. I want to believe that some viewers might relate with what I'm saying. Now, I want to ask you one thing, say hypothetically, you, Londi, we request you as members to say, you know what, I want you to be able to assist yourself in the board to take it to that uh, next state, right? I think also I'm going to refer back to the agency theory that you spoke about. The agency theory also refers to the part to say, those that you have be able to, that we have sent to be able to deliver whatever still called they that's where internal audit actually uh, some of the background come from they will always find a way to push their own agenda so it's important for us to put a measuring tape so that we as the members send in them and then be able to understand i want to also in fact come closer to the part of listening to the members what should we do as members, in fact, to make sure that the people that we send to the board, I'm talking specific now in, in the two months to come, how do, what, what, do, what should we do for us as members to say, we are keeping these people monitored. We are, they are actually doing what we have sent them to do instead of falling into whatever personal interests that they want. It might be a controversial question. I thought I was so, just feeling about that. Yeah, no, it is very controversial indeed. Um, however, it's a very necessary question. Um, I think we need to understand that as members of professional bodies everywhere, um, mm -hmm. we, we are also um, responsible to make sure that our bodies work for us. And by doing that, you need to, to hold your board accountable. Um, you cannot mm -hmm. hold the board accountable if you don't have any access to them and if there's no way that you can talk to them. Um, one of the ways that you can do that, you, as, as the board, you can do an engagement survey um, where you check the membership. Um, mm -hmm. Something you can call it stress test, you can call it engagement, um, you can call it uh, in anything really. But the, 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 the purpose of it would be just to put in a yardstick to see, are we effectively discharging our duties as the board? Um, mm -hmm. Are we, are we, you know, being truthful to the to the membership that we are serving? Because mm -hmm. in that agency theory, the agency and the principals' um, purposes and directions they need to be aligned so that you don't create any misconception that um, you are going forward and you are not. And if they are not. If, if they are not aligned, that creates obviously a conflict of interest where the whole um, you know, exercise will not be working as smoothly as it should or as it was intended. Because now um, 
you as the as the board you have your own um, aspirations about the organizations whereas then the the agents the agents that are acting on your behalf they have a different um, you know view or a different direction that they want to take um, then it asks the question what are the agents working for if they are not um, aligned with what the principals want or the principals uh, i have envisaged so those needs to be uh, acutely aligned um, and now we're talking membership of the of the club. We're talking the people that are appointed to serve the club. So definitely, accountability is is key, and um, you know monitoring and oversight is also key, because you will not know if you're doing the right um, thing or the, you're going on about things the right way if there's no monitoring exercise at all. Exactly. Yeah. You know what? I, I think. Uh... Um, um, you are taking me to such an interesting, I think a lot of members might know if they don't. Sometimes I'm privileged to be able to uh, attend some meetings with the Pretoria chapter that I used to serve as the chairperson. And I realized there's a nice initiative that came from the current board to say, we are going to allocate board members to individual regions. So I think that is a good start. I think but if I hear you properly, you are saying there need to be a list of things that needs to be monitored and reported upon on a continuous basis, more like a constituency sort of an approach. Yes. So I think that is how so that, we can use uh, some sort of a way. Yeah, that's, that's an excellent example because it talks to the engagement I was talking about. You, you as the board, you have to engage the membership and see where are the um, the problems, what are they facing on a day to day. It's it's nice that you would have uh, you know demarcated it in per region per board member because it it, it gives everyone um you know responsibility and it's easy to hold that person um you know accountable because if if one region that i am you know responsible for fails for one reason or the other you you know who's responsible for that and you know who looks after that region so it's easy to hold me accountable and say listen your your region is not doing well um what are we yes. doing about it um you know so that's the accountability we're talking about people need to get closer to the membership um so you, you there's no level that is too far from the membership you you have to uh, be reachable and accessible yeah. Oh, that, that, that is false tradition. I think, uh, listeners, uh, you, you realize with Rwandile, who is a great and experienced member of internal auditors, I think Isaka, uh, 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 Saika tried to steal him, but we were more clever, and then we caught him, uh, and, and he, he's denying it. He says it was not about to do with the ladies, but I can see his eyes because this man has something to do with the ladies, but we, we, we don't mind. But uh, um, going forward, sir, I think I want to now come to the elephant in the room. You will remember just recently, just before COVID, we had a pre-pandemic called the State Capture Commission. And there was a deep question that a lot of people asked, although mm. COVID made us forget it a bit, to say, where was the internal auditors? We know the board not only serve the members, it must also serve the society to a certain extent. So one will expect that the board members should be more acquainted with that, trying to make the society aware of what internal audit does, how it does it. We even have a challenge today in the Johannesburg Stop Exchange to have an internal audit is not even yet a requirement. And if you were if you were part of the conference a few years ago. For me personally, it didn't look like it's something that they are trying to, to achieve. As part of our professionalization, celebrating 80 years plus, why do you think members need to do more to the society, potential employers, the audit committees, the other board members of other professions that we serve? Because we do serve uh, a lot of of organization as internal auditors. So what should they do more to actually um, teach the site about our calling and the importance of it? Yeah, that's a very tough one. Um, but I, I actually recently read something when where someone was arguing that um, internal auditors do not just write um you know recommendations or findings and all of those things but they then need to follow them up and come up with solutions of doing that but the second person would argue that um so but then coming up with solutions within that then 
recognize, you know, the independence of audit, of internal audit, you know, all those beautiful things we talk about from internal audit point mm -hmm. of view. But the, the question remained in my mind, like, what, why do we have internal audit? Mm -hmm. Surely it's not just to find what's wrong. Um, no, most of the time, it's business it's knows what's wrong. Mm. Yes, most of the time, business or even organizations in general, they know what's wrong with the, well, they know what their yes. challenges are. They know what's not working. Um, but what are we? Mm. And, and exactly. And, and the reason why you have to go there and try and find out what is wrong, you are actually trying to find something that's already known mm -hmm. and something that's already, you know, um, everyone knows about. So you, you obviously have to find a solution. You, you have to be a solution-based in, uh, internal audit. And that's something I think we fall short on. Um, our findings, they most of the time end up in reports and they collect mm -hmm. dust in some cabinet somewhere, or they end up in some committee being discussed, but nothing is ever done about it. So mm -hmm. we talk a lot about audit planning, um, audit um, you know, execution, and then reporting. But are we talking enough about follow-up are we talking enough mm -hmm. about um, you know coming up with solutions, remedial actions, smart action plans, and and uh, ensuring that those plans they actually come to fruition? Perhaps mm -hmm. not. So I think um, the the focus should rather be more on that side um, going forward to ensure that. And that's the, that's the only way you can realize you know the the the, the value that internal audit brings in any organization. Yeah. Mm, yeah, you know what, viewers, you know, if we had the whole day, we would speak the whole day. It's a pity that we are in uh, in press for time that we need to wrap up our conversation. But uh, before even uh, just I ask you the final question and your getaway voice, I want to maybe wrap up and say, I yeah. think um, you're right, we are we're actually looking for accountability that is going to be part of the main thing that our board members and potentials that we need to do on all organizations, not only for our institute. And I think uh, you are right. I think we need to, as, as members, as, civilization, as civil, civilians, as uh, stakeholders, we need to start demanding more accountability. I think to be just uh, play ignorant and saying uh, things will fix themselves is not the way to go. But I, I always say, if I was not to say, anybody who asks me where was the internal auditors during the crisis of the state capture, I let them straight my back. They were being underpaid and put in the corners. So I think <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good thing something broke. They realized to say, hey, we didn't follow the right thing. You know, some people will go out there and remove some parts of the bodies up until you realize, I didn't know I did my finger so much. So I, I'm happy to a certain extent that things fell it, apart it, a bit it's, then in future they'll remember it's funny that not uh, to the <laughs> but it, anyway so that I, the, the people will ask the third line of defense where uh, where was internal audit what about the first and second line why why, why is anyone yeah. not asking where are they I mean, the first line is management. Where was management? Normally, the first and the second are the ones that are asking who is the third. <laughs> you know, when you play football, you, you leave the ball starting from the other side. It passed the strikers, past the middle field, past the defense. When the goal is called, it's, ah, goalkeeper, you are not playing proper, man. What's happening? This goalkeeper. <laughs> yeah. Like but and, and, and that's quite an interesting analogy. And if, you, if the play is not... Um, you know, well coordinated on the field. You can't blame the goalkeeper, exactly. uh, but okay. everyone needs to play their part. That's exactly okay. where we need to to drive towards. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I'm I'm happy. I think I, I would really, really want to discuss further with you. Hopefully, we'll have time to talk about this. Uh, being member of the board, but twenty seconds, uh, just parting words uh, of uh, how do you feel? Anything particularly about the topic of today? Uh, my key takeaway is ethics. Everyone needs to be ethical in their uh, in their role. Whether you are a board member, you are the a the agency that the board member is hired to look after their interests. You need to be ethical. Uh, number two, the the membership or the shareholders or whoever that you are acting on behalf of, they need to hold those that, that are on their behalf accountable. So accountability mm -hmm. is key. Uh, Everyone's responsibility. So those are my key takeaways. 
Thank you extremely very much, uh, Randile, for your time, for your efforts. Uh, and like I said, we are very proud to be able to have you as in our show, In the Blue Moon.